So after I posted my last video where I'm running into this issue that I can't resolve, I had an excellent comment from somebody named Evan Almloff, 8606. I hope I'm saying that anywhere close to correctly. And he left a comment saying that I should use Spawn Future, which I looked into and on the Dioxys docs, it says Spawn a Future that Dioxys won't clean up when this component is unmounted. This is good for tasks that need to be run after the component has been dropped. And that is exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to jump into it and see if that works. So I have my sync after change function here, which is what's causing the issue. This is the spawn is not running after the sheet that starts running it is dropped. So I'm going to change this to spawn forever. All right. So here you can see that when the app starts it syncs and then it's got these debug connections and that means that the sync actually went through so that's what we're looking for once i change something in the app so i'm going to go over here to the app and go change this tester 5 to tester 6 press save and now oh i thought it was about to work it went to it printed the na sync so that did work better Let's see, where am I? And then it printed the syncing. And then it says there was, could not find context furtherance state first state. So for some reason, it's saying the context could not be found. And that must be in the syncing, which is odd because that doesn't happen when it syncs at any other point. It's only, I guess, now in the spawn future. I'm wondering what happens. I don't think it'll change anything, but if I remove this move. No, same issue. So basically it's just force qu it's panicking and force quitting. And now I need to find out why the state isn't working, which I imagine is going to be in the request sync. So here it's where it says syncing. So let's see if it doesn't even get past this. Say print line, does it get here? Save that. And if not, then it means this use context is the issue. All right, it's definitely still crashing, obviously, but do we get that printed? Okay, so we have syncing and then thread panicked. So it never prints, does it get here? Meaning it cannot find state anymore once I'm calling it in a future or in a, a forever, in a spawn forever. Okay, so why is the context not being called? I may need... All right, now that I'm looking at it, I'm actually reminded of a previous comment also by Evan that he posted in a previous video. And there he told me I shouldn't use use context in an async sense. I should use consume context. And I'm wondering if that's going to apply here and going to resolve the issue. So I'm going to see if I can change this use context to consume context and we'll see where we go. All right, here we go again. No, it still crashed. So that didn't resolve the issue. Okay, um, I'm gonna have to keep working on this. I'm not sure exactly what's happening or why. And yeah, I guess I'm just gonna have to keep working and see what else I can come up with. The consume context isn't working, but I think Evan really got me moving in the right direction here. It's definitely spawn forever. That is what's going to make this work. So I just need to find a way to use that and also be able to access the context, I guess. I'm going to have to dig more into this error message and make sure I'm getting that right. But yeah, so onwards we go. Okay, so it is the next day. 
And I think last night I actually was able to solve this issue. So I'll jump in here. What I did is I changed all of the state to just global signals, which I think this makes more sense anyway, because it is all global state. Like it's not just in one component or just a couple of components. This is all global stuff that I had here. And I just had it in one big struct. So I had a first state struct and I had all these signals within that. And, you know, especially when I'm doing something like this spawn forever, that's not working with that. I don't really see that there would be any downside to using just global signals for all of those. So I think this is actually going to be better and it just works for this. So I'll show you now if I go in the app and Let's just take this one that I made yesterday and I change that to two and I save that. And you can see down here, we got into the in async now, we got syncing and it actually synced. So everything is now working. I just changed it to the global signals and I still use the use context, use signal, that type of stuff for state within components and within a couple of components maybe that are linked together. but for all of this, what is global state, I'm using the global signals. I, it just makes sense. So I'm almost done with the app now. I basically just need to tweak the interface, uh, add some like messages. So like for the syncing, for example, in the settings, I'm gonna add just a little message underneath of it so that it says like, oh, logged in, logged out, syncing, that type of thing just like is in the desktop app already. And once that stuff's done, I think I'm essentially done with the app. Just some testing, you know, I'll put it up on um, a test flight for iOS at first, and I might make that an open beta, we'll see. And then I've got to try to get this thing on Android, which I, I have like an old Android that I can test it on, but I haven't pulled that thing out in a while, so I'll have to try to do that and then it's going to be able to be released so i'm super excited it's really coming together and i'm happy to get it out there and get it into your guys's hands so that finally we can do some syncing between our phones and the desktop for further and it's going to be really cool so i appreciate you watching this video and thank you again evan for your comment that really pushed me in this direction it really helped and i will see you guys in the next video